share my screen here. Okay. So can everyone see this uh, slide? Yeah. Cool. So Essen and I teamed up to create Poseidon, which is one big N8N ocean. Um, and so what this is, is a tool to manage um, various test instances. So you don't have to build locally. You can just define a branch, a few other metadata, and basically push, push the instance or, or update that instance. So kind of similar to what we have on cloud, but the ability to have custom branches and that kind of thing for testing. We have something similar like this now. Mutasim um, created this awesome, basically GitHub Actions in Heroku workflow. It's triggered by a slash command. Um, with that, I think talking with Mutasim, you know, that was still on his sort of personal Heroku account. Um, and so what we wanted to do is kind of take inspiration from, from his thing and set something up that can be a simple MVP that we can then build upon. So we basically have our own internal tooling for doing this. Um, so I envision us using this for user testing, feature testing, basically anyone that wants to spin up an instance uh, could act as a time machine. You want to go back a few versions. You want to try some different branch. You don't have to mess about with the terminal to build this. And hopefully with the great stuff that, that Ivan's team was working on, we'll get it even faster. Um, so um, I'll go into like stack and sort of how we built in a sec, but I'll first start off with a demo. Um, so we used Retool for the front end. Basically, Retool consumes in it and, and a bunch of stuff under the hood. Um, this is the dashboard page. So here we have a list of the instances that are available. And I think in future, we would want the ability to be able to add more instances right now, it's sort of fixed. So there's a finite number of slots and you can sort of choose which one you're assigned to. Um, so from here, you can go ahead and open that instance. This one has basic auth on it. Um, or you can go open that instance. So if I look here, there's a second instance here. I can view slash modify it. And this opens the individual view. We see everything's loading and then in the workflow just served all this info here. So we have all sort of the different information for the instance, the username, the password, the URL, the branch that's assigned to it, as well as the RAM and CPU. Right now, these aren't changeable. In future, we'd like to make them changeable and probably have some presets for things like edit in cloud start and in a cloud medium. So you can actually spin up an instance and see what it's going to be like for a user on a certain one or in future to try and represent things like an EC2 uh, T3 micro instance or something like that. So we can start emulating what something might, um, uh, how an NNN might work on a sort of a, a real instance type out in the cloud. Um, in any event, you can open the instance. Um, in this case, I had already opened this one. So the auth is already set, but I could copy the username copy the password if I needed to. Um, and then if we want to modify the instance, we click this, which opens up this modal here. We could give it another name, which this is just so for people to understand what it's for. Maybe this one's for user testing. Uh, maybe John Stamos wants to use it, we could do that. And then the branch that we'd like to use here, perhaps we've got one here. We want to switch to this one, we want to test that. In future, of course, we could have maybe a little drop-down picker to explore the available ones. And perhaps we don't change the using the password right now. Then we will modify this. Again, we're using NNN to handle all the ETL for this. And in a second here, we should get a response that it worked. The view behind updates. And right now, similar to Mutasim's original, we basically open up a GitHub actions view, which is part of, sort of the backend here, which shows that this is building. In future, we'd like to basically have some asynchronicity and bring like a, a status into this dashboard so you never have to go into GitHub. Um, and then so from here, when it's updated, you can open that instance. Right now it's updating um, and you can use it. Um, and that's sort of in a, in a nutshell, the, the front end experience is these two views. The way we built it, because we're basically consuming NNN workflows, it's going to be very easy to add like a Madden or slash command or something to do some of these steps. Again, the MVP of that could just open this view. Another one could replace this view because uh, basically what we built is a headless backend, right? This is just consuming that. If we have something that consumes it in the same way, sort of any number of things could consume them. Um, you can also report an issue, send an email to me, and you can tip us in crypto. Just kidding. Um, but you can donate Dunas or Knoppers to Max and Essen if you like. Um, so the tools that we used to make this happen, 
we have retool in the front end. That's what you saw here today. Um, honestly, I haven't used retool as much um, or as deeply as this time around. For me, what was really cool was how easy it was to set up things like um, this kind of asynchronous waiting for the statuses of things. So if, let's say I change this here, you can see this loading state and whatnot. It's waiting for the NNN workflow to return. If it returned with an error, we would see actually some error validation. In this case, again, it was successful. So we see that. Um, then we use NAN. It's basically our backend. So it handles the extraction, transforming, loading of data between retool, base row, and our NNN cluster. Um, we then use NNN cloud, actually, for the instance cluster. So we're using our staging in, uh, instance, and this can give you a bit more details on what we're doing exactly there, sort of he handled that part. Um, and then we're using our internal base row instance for storing various data. Here's an example of what that database is. So most of the data you're seeing in retools actually lives here because it's just basically metadata for humans um, and to have a record because it's not so easy to fetch this data from the instance. Um, so for example, the username, password, et cetera. Obviously it's in plain text right now. We figured that's okay because these are test instances. So they're not gonna be, um, have very sensitive data on them. And I think in terms of improvements, right? These names that just sort of, uh, you just type in text for now. So in future that could perhaps be typed as well maybe even integrated with Notion. Um, so yeah, so that's the stack that we used. And if it helps, this is sort of how everything's structured. So we have the user over here using retool, which talks with these NNN workflows, which then consumes these other sort of things here. Um, and I can quickly go over sort of one of these flows and perhaps Essen can show you some of the, some of the other backend moving parts. Um, we filter this down. Um, we had broken it up into multiple workflows. Some of these are deprecated now. We realize maybe it was a bit overkill. Um, but the first flow that we use is called the fetch all instances. This is what's used to populate that dashboard view that you see over here. And basically what this does is it just pulls in base row and acts basically as an API wrapper for base row. So we could have gone directly to base row. What's nice about this is in future, if we want to start pulling in other data sources, Perhaps the status of the instance isn't saved in base row. We've got to pull that live or any number of other sources. We can do that all here in the intermediary step, tweak this um, set node, which basically prepares the response payload to send back to retool, and we're good to go. Um, so that's fetch all instances. There's also a single fetch instance, which just grabs a lot more detail um, to populate that individual view when we open it, just so it's a bit more efficient. Um, and then we do have an update instance. Um, and this is a post action. And so what this does, um, again, fetches some data from base row, triggers another workflow, which triggers the build here. Um, actually, Essen, do you want to take over and explain what's happening here? Because I know this is, uh, there's a few things we want to tweak up before this is quote unquote production ready. Sure. Um, so yeah, so this update mm -hmm. workflow, I mean, so once we have the details from base row, two things need to happen. Uh, one is like triggering the build from GitHub action. And the other is to actually deploy that generated image on one of the cloud instances that we have. Um, so yeah, so the trigger build just like, uh, sends a API request to the GitHub API, um, to start the image building process and then pushes the image to um, our uh, Docker hub. And the RabbitMQ node, it's basically sending a Rabbit message to our cloud infrastructure <clears throat> uh, to create an instance with the details that we got from base row. So one thing that needs to, like a few things that need to be done here before we can actually use this seamlessly in production is to add a wait because the building and like pushing the image takes around 10 to 15 minutes and after that wait, we can like trigger the deploy on the cluster. Or we can, if we manage to add a, a hook on GitHub Actions that once the build push is completed, then we can trigger the deploy as well. So two ways to do it. Uh, obviously like during Hack Mission, we couldn't make changes on master repo. So yeah, this is pending after. Um, so yeah, that's, pretty much it we have uh, so we have like five instances that are like reserved for these stage deployments 
and yeah so they have one two three four five so basically like once once you trigger a build it creates an image tagged with the uh, instance id and name and id so there's the tags always remain the same but whatever branch is getting selected from the ui it actually creates the image from that branch and tags it with the uh, deployment id and then just deploys that image onto the instance we hope it makes sense yeah and so in terms of like roadmap where we see this thing going is exactly kind of what Essen described there is fixing it so that um, we ideally can get that hook in uh, when the everything's done. As soon as we do that, it shouldn't be too difficult within it end to have basically an async flow that could furnish retool with a status. So we can have a little sort of green light, let users know that it's sort of in progress or done just like we have on anything cloud. Um, in my mind as well, the CPU and the RAM isn't something that can be changed right now by the user. It shouldn't be too hard to do. And again, we could start thinking about having some presets for those things. Um, and right now, you can only change a branch. We hard coded one or two things, but in future, this could perhaps be, there's a step before this, we select if you want a version of NNN or a branch, and then you could pick the latest version, the historical version, um, et cetera. And then from there, I really think we would just kind of model the kinds of customizations that we want to do. So Mutasim has this great little front end tool I sometimes use for sort of changing, I don't know if it's environment variables, but various under the hood settings for testing. You could imagine there being like a little JSON payload where you could tweak those things for various testing, especially these things that are kind of difficult to simulate like new user or user was added into the um, power user prompt to ask them uh, for the email, these kinds of things that might be difficult to simulate, um, and the ability to sort of add multiple instances, um, and obviously to make this tip crypto button work for real. So that's kind of on the roadmap for this feature when we get some time to do it. Um, I'm hoping, because this is something that we kind of would be very useful for me, that maybe before the next hackmation, we could find a few hours to sort of make these at least MVP tweaks, so it's production ready, and, and share this with everyone who wants to be able to spin up instances. Um, so yeah, this was Poseidon um, by myself and Essen. Essen, thanks for doing all of that heavy lifting on the uh, on the info side.